Okay, we're gonna go do brand new hover auto video for auto. Gonna go do a brand new hover auto video for you. So what we do, we got two cameras, Heather's running cameras. And I wanna tell you the trick to this maneuver is timing. It's understanding the timing. The other day I had somebody say, what do you mean when you reposition your hand on the throttle? All that means is you're repositioning your wrist so that when you roll like this, you have enough travel in your wrist to turn all the way off. If you didn't have it quite ready, you, you might run out of travel. So it means you're normally holding a collective like this, we'll say. You reposition it outward so when you go throttle off, you got full travel of your wrist. The key to this maneuver is eyes outside and timing. Throttle off, right pedal, pause, up collective. Not that many movements, but you gotta do them right. And here's the key. It has to be, I'm gonna move the mic as my pedal. You go one, two, three. That's simultaneous off, throttle off, right pedal in a counterclockwise system. So it's one, two, three. And then I do one 1,000, pull. Then when you get to the ground, collect it back down. That's the key. The key is the timing. There's a small pause that needs to be in there. People go, Rant, yank, and they yank it. And they go back flying again, and then they go back down, and then they bounce back up again. Or they go, they slam it down. You know, it's this, pause, pull. Now, depending on the helicopter, that pause could be a little bit longer, a little bit less. So let's go do that. So at least you can see the cyclic and you can see the pedals. That's probably see a lot of the collective, but the collective movements I'm going to explain in detail. So the key to this maneuver is absolutely 100% timing. Okay? And a good setup. And people like to argue all the time I preach, you know, good setup for a normal approach, good setup for a normal or for straight out or whatever the case is, need a good setup. People go, well, but um, they say, well, but that's not real world. Guess what? We need to train to a standard, okay? So, if you set the hover auto up nice, probably going to be nice. If you set it up sloppy and you don't feel good about it, the internet is probably going to come out sloppy. That's just the way it works. So I'm going to do several of them here. Since we got cameras rolling, hopefully they come out pretty good for you. We can show you some different angles. But remember, it's all about timing. So... I'm going to lift the helicopter up first, hover for a minute, make sure everything's good to go. My pre-liftoff uh, check, everything looks good, gauges in the green. Got to get through that instrument bounce, and I'm up off the ground, okay? So now what I want to do, get stabilized hover going, make sure that all my uh, gauges and stuff look good, gauges look good, power's good, everything's good, all right? So I want to focus outside, I'm going to say 50 to 75 feet. I'm actually looking at a house out there. It might be 300 yards. I don't know, but I'm looking out at a house way out ahead of me. Okay? So, reposition your hand on the throttle just means you're moving your wrist outward more than you would normally because when we roll throttle off, we wanted a nice, smooth, fluid movement. And you have to do it simultaneous throttle off right pedal. And you got to do it smooth and simultaneous or else the maneuver will be screwed up. And then on the cyclic, when I enter, I go a little bit forward and a little bit to the right. That's just what I do. Okay, then we can talk about that, you know, more in detail why, but that's what I do. So, to get ready for the maneuver, I want to start looking outside, 50, 75 feet. Stabilize, hover going. Then I'm going to count it off. One, two, three, enter. When I enter, I'm going to roll off, roll off throttle, add right pedal. I'm going to pause, and then I'm going to raise collective, and then collective back down. So let's do one, see how it comes out. So here we go. Haven't done one in a month or so. So here we go in one, two, three, enter. Throttle off right pedal. I paused, I pulled, and there we are under the ground. Now my collective back down. People will do that, and then they keep the collective up there, and then the helicopter starts shaking. Once you make ground contact, collective back down. So let's do another one. And I'll just tell you about the instrum. I had a question the other day. I said I start at 2300. In the instrum, it has a correlator, but no governor. So if I start at 2300, I have it nice and stable, if I just start raising the collective, the correlator takes care of adding throttle and I don't have to do much with the throttle, which makes it really nice. So even though we don't have a governor, this thing is really easy to fly. All you gotta do is manipulate that throttle just a little bit. 
There's the Enstrom bounce. Let's pick it up. We're going to do the same thing again. It's all about timing. Today, let's see, on this one I'll try to uh, focus more on the pause. I'm even going to count 1-1000 one, and then pull. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, enter. Whoops. All right. I wasn't ready. Here we go. We'll do it again. I'm going to count one, two, three, and then I'm just going to do it, but I'm going to, I'm going to do the one, one thousand, meaning I'm, I'm counting for the pause. And we'll see how it comes out. So, hoverado in one, two, three. So, I'll right, pedal, pause, whoops, I pulled a little, and down. See, screwed that one up. We'll do it again. Screwed me up trying to say pause. I think you get the idea. Now it depends on the day, depends on the way, how heavy are you, what's the wind. You know, on a windy day, definitely in an instrument, you can go 1-1,000 one, 1, before you pull. If you're flying a, a smaller, light, and low inertia, or low inertia rotor system, you might roll throttle off and pull that collective right up. It just depends kind of on the aircraft. They can vary just a little bit. So maybe, you, maybe I'll do better if I just talk to the maneuver and you and know when I roll throttle off, I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, enter. When I say enter, I'm rolling the throttle off. Count how long it takes me before... Um, I touched the ground. Should definitely be over a second. Should definitely be well over one one thousand. That's what I'm going to pull. So one, two, three, enter. One pause. Oh, there we go. And then right. Look how nice that goes. Okay, wasn't the prettiest auto ever, but I paused. So hopefully you can see that. So we're going to roll it up again, and we'll do a couple more. But when you do this for the private pilot, you want to make sure you keep that nose pretty straight. And this helicopter, years ago, my buddy that owns it, on his pr private, he let the nose go one direction, but then he repaired it, or fixed it before he hit the ground. The examiner said, I almost failed you, or failed you, because the nose went too far one direction or the other, but you, you got the nose back forward again before you touched the ground. So very important to stay on top of those pedals and keep that nose straight. No rearward movement, no sideways movement. You want to come straight down, or even a little bit of forward movement wouldn't be bad. So here we go. Remember, simultaneously roll off the throttle and add the right pedal. I pause for about 1 1,000 and then try to do a smooth pull and then collective back down. So here we go. In 1, 2, 3, enter. Ooh, I like that one. There we go. All right, I'm getting warmed up. That was nice. I hope the, uh, hope the audio is working out. I don't have to shoot this again. Sometimes you have problems, but that's just the way it is, right? So I'm gonna get my 2300. Let's talk through a pickup. Pickup should always be a two-step process. Get the aircraft light in the skids. Pause, neutralize all movements. Step number two, lift the aircraft into the air. Gently lift the aircraft into the air. There's the instrument bounce. Hard to even talk during the instrument bounce. It's so stupid. All right, let's do one more. I probably can't beat that last one. I doubt this one looks as good. That last one was nice. I don't know how it looked on the outside, but it sure felt good on the inside. So here we go. Reposition my hand on the throttle. And count. One, two, three. Enter. Throttle off right. Pedal pause. A little bit of a pull. Onto the ground. Kept the nose straight. Pretty darn nice. That one was not as good as the last one, but still pretty good. The key is don't go sideways. Don't go backwards. And don't let the nose turn too far left or right. You want to keep that nose forward. If you can do that, if you stay on top of those pedals, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Again, common mistakes. People roll the throttle off and pull a whole bunch. Or they slam the collective on the floor, and that doesn't work either. We're going to do one more. One, two, three. Enter, throttle off right, pedal pause, pull. Collective back down, pedals back to neutral. And there you go. Cool, I'm gonna slide over here to the right and shut down and go in and check this out. The video that I'm replacing is more than eight years old because it, the video I've had inside the site for years was shot prior to 2012. So, pretty old video. That's okay. We're getting a fresh brand new one. I think it'll be good. You know what? What the hell? Let's do one more. 
One, two, three, enter. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Very nice. Done. So, Heather's working from home today. She's in chat to, to say hi to everybody. Brian Rutledge is here to answer your technical questions. I do want to touch on Zach's question. This video makes it look like Paws is actually letting the helicopter start to descend, then apply the collective to cushion the descent. Is that accurate? Yes, that is absolutely accurate. And I want to make that point because, you know, in life we're all good at some things and we're not good at others. I suck. I completely suck at teaching slopes. I hate teaching them. I'm not that good at teaching them. I think it's the, one of the hardest maneuvers. I save it to the very end. But that pause, I think, is absolutely key. Pause and timing. And so when I'm talking about, you know, some people are good at some things and not at others. This is one that I can teach. And even when I was a new instructor, I worked at a busy flight school and when people would have, students would have real trouble with hover autos, they go, ah, they'd send them to me. Just because I, for whatever reason, I guess I had it broke into that simple thing. People get all freaked out over the hover auto, and I swear, the maneuver is not that tough. As I said in the beginning of the video, number one, it has to be simultaneous, right? It's gotta be rolling, rolling and pushing that pedal, short pause, depending on what aircraft you're in and depending on the day, and then cushioning the landing. People screw up, either they, they, they're not, they're, the common mistake is they, they don't do it together smoothly. You know, they go rant, rant, or jam the pedal and do the throttle. So that's the first problem people have. Nice and smooth, simultaneous, together. And then that short pause. Now, that's flying an Enstrom, right? And a little R22. Probably not much of a pause. You're pretty much in the R22 light inertia. When you roll that thing off, you're dropping. This is a heavy inertia rotor system. So every helicopter is going to be just a little bit different, but it is timing. The maneuver is not that difficult. However, people make it very, very difficult in the beginning. And in my opinion, it's two things, timing and that pause. And I stated at the beginning of the, beginning of the video, and I want to state it again. Out of all the people I've taught, I think for me, what I've seen most is the biggest problem is just them not getting the collective, not getting the collective right. A lot of times they'll enter the maneuver and they'll, and they'll start pulling. Well, you got to let the aircraft settle a little bit. So if you do that and you pull, okay, you've already screwed a maneuver up. And then sometimes they'll go, ramp, they roll it off and they dump the collective. Or they don't do anything at all, which actually you're better off not doing anything at all because even if, if long as you keep that nose straight, when you roll the throttle off and you get the pedal in there, at least you keep the nose straight. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to hit just a little bit hard, but it's really not a big deal. The big deal is keeping the nose forward, not having any sideways movement and not having any rearward movement because you're not going to roll it over as long as you stay on top of that nose and you're either going straight down or you're going forward. The problem is if you let it go sideways, you can roll it over or backwards you can strike the tail boom. And I know this directly from training on my commercial, had my private and the instructor I was flying with was out with another student. I'm brand new private pilot. I got a lesson scheduled and I get a call. Hey, Kenny, uh, you don't need to come in today cause the helicopter's wrecked, it's totaled. I'm like, what happened? They rolled it on a dynamic rollover. I'm like, you're kidding. So I had to drive in anyway, just cause I wanted to, you know, I wanted to know what happened. Instructor and student, when he entered it, the helicopter came back and the nose went a little bit to the left. So when that happened, he caught that rear skid, bloom, 
popped it over on its side. So this is an aircraft that I'm flying. I took to just taking my private in. I want to be a professional pilot, so I'm studying for commercial. So I wanted to know what the hell happened. And after that is when I really honed in where I mentioned the video how I personally, and this works for me, in a counterclockwise system, when I enter the hover auto, I go just a little bit forward with the cyclic, and I go just a little bit to the right with the cyclic because the tendency is the helicopter wanting to actually turn a little bit left and go a little bit back. So I use it and I do it every single time. I don't even think about it. And I didn't even really say it much in the video because I wanted to explain it, you know, kind of after the fact so you understood why when I enter, down collect it, or sorry, throttle off right pedal, pause. But when I enter that thing, when I go rolling off and hit right pedal, it's very minute, but I'm taking that cyclic and I'm going just a little bit forward and just a little bit to the right. And I even cheat usually with just a little tiny bit of forward movement. And you probably caught that in the video. Maybe you didn't. I do everything with a little bit of forward movement. And I don't care who says it's good, who says it's bad, who says it ain't right. Every time I sit down, I use a little bit of forward movement. Every time I pick up, I use a little bit of forward movement. Hover auto, I'm actually inching that thing forward just a little bit as I enter it and get into it. Because I know if I'm going forward, I'm not going left, I'm not going right, and I'm not going backwards. So I'm not going to get in a dynamic rollover situation. If I'm keeping that nose straight and I have a hair of forward movement, I'm not going to roll the thing over. Ain't going to happen. So I'm excited about this video. I'm happy to do it today. We shot that yesterday. I got up at 5 a.m. today to edit that. Um, Heather did a great job on the filming. And I want to mention the phone number right here. We are during this coronavirus, or I said it, I haven't used that term. Heather is going to be home for the next month working. She might come in maybe a little bit, but yesterday I made the decision. I'm like, you know what? I just don't feel right, even if it's just me and you here together by ourselves. You know, you travel 40 to 45 minutes to get here. You might need to stop for gas or you might have a problem on the roadway. I don't want to be the one that's responsible for exposes you to somebody that, you know, possibly has this virus. So what we deciphered yesterday and Heather was happy with it after we talked about it. For April, Heather's going to just stay home and work and do what she can from the laptop. So she will be checking the phone line for April, seven days a week. She took the phone home with her. So it's a mobile phone. So Heather will be answering the telephone, either your phone calls or your text, or at least returning your call. I mean, if she's, you know, having supper with her son, she's not going to answer the phone, but to, to serve you better and have, take our hogs customer service to better than it's ever been before. This is what we're doing, right? We, Brian Rutledge is on his second week full-time with us. He works for home anyway, and that was the intention to start with. So he, nothing's changed with him. Nothing's really changed with me because I can go from my house to the airport and I don't have to talk to nobody. I don't have to stop nowhere. I can just, ch -ch -ch. so I'm safe coming here by myself. I can still come in and work. Mm -hmm. Brian's available and Heather's available. And this way I just feel better about keeping everybody safe. And so I said, well, let's do this. Cause normally the phone, you know, sits over the weekend. A lot of times it would lay there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I might come in on Friday. I might not, I might come in on the weekends, but quite honestly, do I check the phone? No, I don't. So the damn thing would lay there all weekend. And if you called or text on the weekend, you didn't get an answer. So for April, Heather's got the phone worth her at home. I am making sure she still has a paycheck all month. Next week, she's going to have a sur uh, just a minor surgery, an outpatient surgery, but this way she can be home, she can be comfortable, she can relax, and still, you know, even if she's home resting, she can sit down with the laptop and ask her your questions about, you know, the normal logins. She sends every brand new member a, you know, a nice welcome email and offers up the 30-minute uh, consultation with Brian. If you don't know who we are, well, I am Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Land Ground School. Heather works full time with here, here with me here at the Hogs Hangar. Brian Rutledge, 30 year aviator. Uh, he just wrote his bio up today, so I have that to put on the website so you can learn more about Brian's background. But in essence, 30 years of flying, 25 years with the Sheriff's Department, 15 years in the Sheriff's Department Aviation Unit. So Brian is in charge now of 
answering comments with inside the helicopter line ground school site and Brian's super detail oriented. So every morning he starts way early in the morning. So he gets in there first thing, goes to the hog site and to check and see what members have said overnight. And then he gets in there and answers questions. And like yesterday we took care of something. He said, Hey, a member pointed out a problem with one video. Something's changed in a reg. I said, send me the video number and what time. Boom, at five o'clock this morning, I went in, downloaded it, made a repair, psh, uploaded it. So Brian's in charge of the content, moving helicopter online ground school forward. So he'll be, uh, he'll be really your contact if you're really wanting to discuss content or you have a question about the content or you have feedback. Most of the feedback we get is good. I mean, it's amazing what we've done in eight years online. Sometimes people, are, you know, sometimes you get a, rarely do we have anybody disgruntled, right? We're here to take care of you. And I, I never feel guilty because for eight years we've done nothing but upgrade this site. We've done nothing but make improvements. And that's what we've been doing for eight years and we will continue to do. We do enjoy feedback and we want your feedback because that's how we improve the site. However, I will say we have four courses now with hundreds of videos. So because you point something out doesn't mean we're going to fix it at 8 a.m. the next day, right? We have a list of changes. Brian's going through the site and there's a lot of things we're going to be upgrading and updating. And we're starting with the private pilot. So when you make suggestions on the other courses, that's going to take a little more time to get there. But we decided private pilot is the basis of what everybody needs to know, right? Because then you go into commercial and you take your private knowledge and you hone that and you make it rock solid. And then the CFI level, you have to teach that knowledge. So we want everybody to utilize the private pilot, even the commercial and CFI members. We want you to go back and go through that private section because that's what your training is based on. The commercial part of the membership, that's to take your skills a little farther and show you some different new stuff but we still want you to review the private pilot and that's included with commercial pilot. Same thing with certified flight instructor. If you're going for CFI, we don't recommend you just log into CFI and only watch CFI videos. We recommend if you want to do it and you want to do it right and you want to pass your check ride, we want you to go back to the beginning and we want you to review private material and we want you to review commercial material. And the whole time you're doing that, we want you taking notes, thinking about lesson plans, thinking about how we teach. We have a number of different instructors to watch as you're going through the courses and not every single instructor teaches the same. You as a CFI, you wanna take little nuggets, little pieces of information that you, that you learn throughout your training, whether it's taking you six months or five years from your ratings, your experiences, the helicopters you fly, the people you fly with, you need to come up with your own method of teaching and take all the nuggets and put them together and, and do what works for you. Um, we haven't talked about commercial and CFI much. We're always talking about private. Commercials glorified privates on steroids, right? Same info, but knowing it to a higher level. CFI, you know, I'm passionate about teaching CFIs and I've, and I've, I've taught a lot of people CFI over the years. And I want to give you this advice. I remember back when I started, I got my CFI and I'm like, I can't believe I even have this. Now what do I do? And I can remember going out from my first couple of instructional lessons and I'm like, I remember thinking, I don't know what the hell to do here. But then I just kind of thought, well, I just start, just get started and just, all I did was just kind of in my mind, just caught it, thought about all the things that I learned from the people that I trained with, the good stuff, the things that meant a lot to me, the things that worked for me. And through practice, CFI's license to learn, through practice over time, I just created my own method, you know, and I just took little bits and pieces of everything I learned because I feel like I am very lucky because I have flown with some incredible people. I flew with incredible instructors at my private level, even though I failed my first private, that instructor is one of my best friends to this day. And I was lucky to fly with a lot of really good people throughout my training. And then I've been able to fly with some really good people once I got out in the commercial world, you know, the CFI world. I've been lucky I've flown with a lot of really good people. And that's all I've done is just taken the things that I've learned 
and molded my own, kind of my old method of training. Um, I've been talking to the camera and I, I've been seeing the, the thread go crazy up and down, <laughs> going like crazy. So I don't think I should, I know Heather's here and Brian's here. So I, I don't want to bore you while I'm sitting here and start scrolling through the, all the uh, comments. I will say 45 people here. That's awesome. 12 likes. Please give us a thumbs up. Brian or Heather, would you type in if there's some specific question you wanted me to answer? Would you type it in the thread right now so I could just look at it instead of trying to scroll through that by myself? I will say I miss Heather being here. You know, it, it's it's amazing when you're just even doing a presentation like this, how nice it is when you have somebody here clicking buttons, talking to people, pointing out what you want to talk about. You know, it's, it's kind of weird, but that's OK. Um, Heather and Brian will both do their best to log in when we go live over the next month. I'm going to try to do a lot of stuff for members and the general public both, right? Um, we want to encourage people to keep studying during this situation. And they are. I've been pretty impressed by when I log in, in the morning when I'm drinking coffee to see how many comments Brian has already answered before I even roll out of bed because again, because he's up early and people have made the comments they're like, wow, I can't believe I got answered so fast. But he's an early riser. So he goes to the site and starts working through that stuff. And that's handy, right? So it's handy to have Brian handling that stuff. It's handy to have Heather, you know, taking care of your general questions and talking to new members and taking care of your needs. And then I can focus on, you know, shooting new videos and because I still do all the editing myself still set the cameras up. I mean, Heather's getting to be where she's really good and understands how to set, properly set up a shot. But so for the next month, the best thing to do is uh, keep studying. And I, Brian and I have talked about this. You got to study. There's things to do. There's written tests to take care of. There's orals you're going to be taking care of. Let me see what uh, Brian said. Kenny, when a video is updated on the site, is the date of the update included? You know, I don't believe it is. And this is something, Brian, that that we should talk about right now so the members can see it too. I don't think any, I've ever talked about this and I've used it and I checked today and the last time I used it like on private pilot, there's a place where we can go in on the site and mark updates. And I've made lots of updates. I made one last night and I just thought, you know, I haven't put anything in that announcement section. There's an announcement section in each library for each product and it's up on the right hand corner. And that announcement's kind of a spot to put like a log of changes. So in the old days, when I uploaded something new, I would just put in the title, new video uploaded 12, 10, 2015. Well, then the next thing you know, two years goes by and that looks bad in the site when it says new video uploaded 2015. So I don't type it in the title anymore. When we've been uploading, we've just been uploading it and making the changes. So now that we're making more upgrades and probably more changes than ever, what we should do is probably go to that announcement bar, clear up in the right hand corner and log the changes. And that will be an easy way for us to know what if I updated something or Brian updates something or Heather updates something. If we all go to that announcement section, not only can we keep track of what's been updated, any member can see that same thing. Like if you want to go in and see what we've updated in the last 30 days, last 60 days, that will have a date on it. So that's probably where we should go with, uh, that now that we're taking helicopter online ground school to the next level, taking helicopter online ground school to the best customer service. There are so many options and things that we have available to us that we haven't even utilized yet. This site that we have, because for the last year I've just been marketing like crazy to keep the business moving and take care of customers. There's, there's, we have a bunch of new upgrades available to us that I haven't even used yet because I haven't had time to sit down and go through the tutorials of the new options and new things that we have that are available to us right now. So this next month will be a good time in my spare time to start looking at some of the other options of some of the things that uh, we have available to us because there's a lot that I'm not even utilizing yet because I just haven't had time. So uh, let's see, was that it, Brian? All right, well, I don't see. I think that looks like. Uh... All right, I don't want to make everybody stand here. Wait, while I'm trying to scroll back and forth. 
what we'll do is, uh, I see Brian's comment. What we used to do when we had live events and had a lot of us in the room, we would have somebody updating a uh, Google Doc on a screen so I could just look up and see. So that's what we'll do, Heather, Brian. We'll start using that Google Doc and then I can have it up on the screen. So if there's something specific that I need to answer, I can just look up at that do Google Doc and I'll go, oh, hey, yeah. Oh, it's an answer specific question about that one. Okay, I can take care of that. So that's what we'll do. Um, because this is awesome, 48 people here watching. I love it, absolutely love it. All right, yeah, I don't need a teleprompter. So there you go. I'm gonna wrap it up. That was a good video, I enjoyed the Hover Auto. There's the phone number if you wanna call in, talk to Heather, leave a message if she has an answer. And remember, you can also text that number as well. And then all of our, you'll see our emails around the site. They're all pretty easy. It's Brian at HelicopterGround.com, Heather at HelicopterGround.com, and Kenny at HelicopterGround.com. So you're welcome to email us too, but we just wanna reiterate, you know, that we're here for you during this time. And even though what's going on in the world sucks, and it's horrible, right? We gotta just keep charging forward. And we're, we're making the best of it by making Ground School the best it's been as far as customer service and taking care of people. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I wanted to say something else and I've lost my train of thought. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you're notified of our videos. I will put, uh, there's no links down there yet, but when I end this live, I'll go down there and put the normal links in that I put in every day. People been gobbling these up, man, and you should. Top 10 check ride tips, free PDF down below. Helicopter check ride, free PDF down below. Free radio course, down below. Um, we're not pushing book shipping right now. You can order them on Amazon if you like. We're not shipping them from here. I took the option down off our page because I, I don't even want to, I don't want to go to the post office and I don't want to send Heather to the post office. So for right now, that's why I've been focusing on all of our free stuff. So, you, you know, members are welcome to those. Well, members already have the radio free radio course in their library. Members, always check your library because some people have training they don't even realize, realize they have. For example, Clarence he always says, Kenny, you don't, pro you don't tell people about the R22 and R44 and instrument specific sections. And I've had people go, hey, there have been a member for a long time. Hey, didn't you say you got some R22 training? I'm like, yeah, look in your library. And then people go, damn, I, did. I had these videos here available to me I didn't even know I had. So we do have Robinson R22, Robinson R44 in an instrument specific section inside Helicopter Online Ground School that is available for you. So know that that's available. Don't forget, we're all student pilots, no matter how many ratings we have, keep learning, be safe, and stay healthy. Absolutely, that, I mean, that's, absolutely. We're always learning every single day, man. Every single day. So I'll, I'll leave you with, we're gonna try to do something fun. I'm gonna try to go live every single day, unless I just get totally wore out and one day take a day off. But I've been enjoying doing it. It keeps gives me something to do versus sitting home and looking at the social media and getting myself frustrated and all wound up. So we're gonna to try to do at least three actual training events per week and then I'll still go live and just do some things. And I'm always training no matter what. I'm always giving away some kind of free content or talking about some kind of type of training. But the next video I have to edit up, I shot this yesterday along with Heather, is we shot max takeoffs. And we just went out here and we used the hangar as our obstacle. I wanted to go use a set of trees on another other side, but I thought, you know what? Heck of a lot handier to just use the hangar. So we shot max takeoffs and the footage looked really good, but I've got like four video files to sit down, go through and edit all that up. So that will be our next video that we're gonna go over. Um, the video that I have in the site now is old. It's 10 years old. <laughs> out with a student many years ago before I even launched ground school just with a GoPro back here and shaking when you see the back of our heads. It sucks. Sucky video. But that's okay because I got a brand new one and I'm going to edit that dude up. I, I'm i always anxious when I get a new video edited. I want to show it like right now. I may wait till Monday unless uh, Brian and Heather are bored over the weekend and don't mind logging in to help me answer questions while we're live. But that's the next video going into the maneuvers. If you don't know, we've been uploading brand new videos with the Instrum inside the hog site. We're probably halfway completed. Brian Rutledge is 
uh, putting downloads in there. He's been working up a download for every maneuver. When we're finished, basic maneuvers and advanced maneuvers will all have brand new videos and they'll all have a download. And this is a download, a resource for you to use. You can click on it and read it right off the screen of your computer. If you'd like to download it and make your own little booklet, you're welcome to do that. But that's what Brian wanted to start with. That was his first pick on what he wanted to do. And I said, go for it, do it. So he's building a download for every single maneuver. And his idea was you could go in watch the maneuver inside Helicopter Land Ground School. And then if you just wanted to refresh your mind real quick or you wanted to come back another time and you didn't feel the need to watch a video, but you just wanted to refresh, you could just take, that, take a peek at that download, bring it up on your iPad or your computer or whatever, download it if you like. And just so you know, we've been talking about this. It's, we're basing the maneuvers pretty much on the helicopter flying handbook. So people teach maneuvers a little bit differently. Terminology changes a little bit. Instructor to instructor, school to school but the essence of the maneuvers really doesn't change that much. One guy says two to three foot hover, another guy might say three to five foot, foot, foot hover, or whatever the case is, but he's built them to be the essence of each maneuver, those points that you really have to do regardless of what helicopter you're flying. So that's the latest, that's what we got going on. Um, I see Heather, I'll mention to KK if he doesn't see the comments. What was the comment? I don't know, you can, you can email me. I just feel like I, I hate to stand here and roll through comments that people are sitting here watching. So there you go. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell. We'll be coming back all month. Try to keep you entertained, keep you motivated, keep you moving. Do like I do. Just ignore social media, man. Do not get sucked in. Man, you can get in the fights over political and you can get in fights over the virus. And oh my God, you know, we can take this time and we can do something valuable with it. Or we could sit around and be whiners and moaners and complainers and hide in the corner. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. We've got to keep our heads up. Keep the nose pointed into the wind. If the weather's iffy, make the decision you're not going to go. That was easy. We'll live to fly another day. All right. See you tomorrow. Peace out.